If you've been keeping up with the Ham Radio Crash Course lore, you know I got bit by the Flex Radio bug not too long ago at Hamvention. The, the cool thing that I took away is there's a couple of features. There's adaptive filtering that they're doing. Oh, okay. That's okay. very good. Yep. All you SDR guys. Where's yep. Don? Is Don in the chat? <laughs> I haven't seen Don yet. Yep. Adaptive filtering. But then also on FT8, they are able to do 40 kilohertz bandwidth and That's put multiple big. yeah multiple signals mm -hmm. within that bandwidth okay so if you get the first 400 mm -hmm. you get the signature series if that matters to you it's um, all of the developers and all of the uh, management to sign the uh, the bottom of it oh that one's not signed by Kate MRD it could be. Series. Well, I could get it signed by KMRD. Yeah, sure. sure. I'm just I'm gonna bring it over to his house right. and just have him sign it. <laughs> yeah. When they introduced the 8600, which you can't see, but that's the screen. I promise it's running Smart SDR. Now, one of the reasons I got it is I can use that radio anywhere so long as I have an internet connection, which makes it kind of useful for a number of things, particularly me being on the go as a dad with kids who participate in things and my traveling around for work and whatnot. It's nice to have an option. Sure. I love my QRP radios. Don't worry, I'm still going to get stuck at TSA when they open my bag and go, what is all this? Why do you have this much technology? That's still not going to change. But I was really intrigued by the technology advancements in the area of remote amateur radio. Now, this goes beyond just operating the radio, which we'll talk about in a much deeper dive as I talk about my getting up to speed with flex radio. Some of this, which you have to understand, right, when we're in front of our radios, we take for granted things like rotating our antenna, if you have a rotor antenna, or just being able to turn it on and off and being able to put hands-on controls and use them that way. Now, a single sideband and even FT8, the radio's handling a lot of that, or you're literally just sending an audio stream that that audio stream is then getting turned in and modulated and sent out of your radio. Morse code is a little bit more precise than that right because you need to key in your dits and daws and sometimes aligning how the morse code flows out of your key into packets that are then shipped over the internet back to your radio reassembled back into dits and daws can be a little fidgety because if you think well i'm just going to send an audio tone of the morse code that doesn't really work it doesn't convert as easily into morse code and having a direct way to key the radio on and off like qsk which is a type of way of actually sending and keying your transmitter doesn't really work over internet as well so there are myriad ways of doing this, facilitating this Morse code, but a lot of people end up using like a keying device that's on your SDR control application. So it'll bring up a little window and you type and then the radio keys out the characters that you send because it can take a J and turn it into da-da-da-da, right? That kind of thing. It knows how to do that. But then you lose some of the feel of doing Morse code. Well, what if you had a dongle, say, I don't know, this dongle, with USB-C and a little 3.5 millimeter jack and these two little black squares on the side. What if you had this and you had your phone, which was running your Flex software, and you plugged it in, and then that was your key? That's right, da-da-da-da. Yes, this tiny MIDI device, and in fact, that's what it's called, the tiny MIDI from N6ARA. Link is in the video description. This will allow you to do Morse code on applications like Smart SDR or SDR Control for you ICOM users anywhere in the world, so long as you have an internet connection and have made that connective tissue back to your home radio. I have hunted people doing parks on the air and summits on the air with this from my phone back to the Flex now and also the SDR control on the 7610, and it works amazingly. Let's go over to the desktop, I'll show you how this all goes down, and, uh, and let's have a little fun. When you have something like SDR control or smart SDR running, you just simply, after the initial setup, plug it in, wait for the light to turn on, little red light there, and then you should be able to key. Pretty simple. When you set this up for the first time, you're gonna make sure that you download the tiny MIDI application for your phone. When you have connected it, you can scan for devices. You won't see one, I already have one connected. This is my save device. 
this is the discovered device, you can change this to, you know, whichever one you need to adapt to or whatnot. But just keep that in mind that your first round, you're going to need to click on one of these guys to set it up. And you can provide the words per minute if you want to do it that way. Make sure you do this before you go to the next steps. As far as setup goes, you go to tools on whichever the device you're using. In this case, we're using Smart SDR. And we're going to go to MIDI controller. I created a device called Tiny MIDI and it's a local device and I did some custom mapping under 20 for CW left paddle and 21 for CW right paddle and you can see that there I'm able to trigger the different MIDI control for that and that's pretty much all there is to it once it's set up like that you can then use some kind of a key that you plug into this which which I'll demonstrate with my radio adventure gear key here and then once it's plugged in you just simply start keying But what is really fun is even though you may not have a flex radio or an ICOM radio that can use the appropriate software, you can use practice apps like Morse It. So Morse It, once you plug in the device and configure it, you'll be able to use this to key as well. And if you're interested in other options that are available, the apps that this supports are Smart SDR, SDR Control, SDR Mo Mobile, Morse It, Veil, Ham Radio Solutions, and Morse Invaders. Now note, there is a switch in the back. This supports two different types of keying devices, if you will, a MIDI mode and a keyboard mode. And as this reminder says, Whenever you switch modes and you want to use a different type of control, so keyboard control for ham radio solutions or Morse invaders, you'll have to switch it to keyboard and then you'll have to unpair the device from your phone uh, before you switch it back for whatever mode of operation you were using beforehand. So keep that in mind if you're planning on doing Morse it and smart SDR and whatnot, you might as well just leave it there most of the time. And if you end up purchasing the tiny MIDI, Aura has a series of manual setup options for whichever software you're running. In this case, I'm getting mine set up to send Morse it, Morse code, with the training app that you can send as text messages. And this too is simple enough. Under settings, go past audio to global, hardware interface, and we want to connect a Bluetooth MIDI device. So let's plug that in. And there we go, connected. It's automatically, oh, it automatically connected, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, good. And with the device now connected, go to DITS and DAWs key. We want to make sure it's enabled. We're going to set DOT to 20 and DASH to 21. Now we're going to go back to global settings, and we want to set the key type to iambic mode A or B. And we want to set the speed to whatever you're comfortable with. So in my case, I do 15 words per minute. And that should be it. Let's see. And then sure enough, once you get it set up, What's kind of fun about this is you can record messages uh, over Morse code. So if you go to the hamburger menu and hit record, YL or your best ham radio friend. And then you can export it. Why not? Let's send it to Leia. Now, if you've made it this far and you're interested in this, there is one thing that you must do that Aura really takes the time to explain this in great detail. There are very tiny set screws on the left and right side, there you go, of the unit. And that's what controls these, this little piece here. This is actually a second piece that brings it out and in. Now, not all phones are different, particularly whichever case you have, right? It's going to give you a little bit of more gap or less space on the back of this. And in fact, mine doesn't even have a top thing. So I had to pull this thing all the way out to get a flush fit. And you really, really, really do need it to be flush because this is putting pretty good load up against the port and you don't want it to, to break if you bump against it. So these help support it. So make sure you set this as per the instructions. And usually, at least the way I remember when I set mine up, is you pull off the back of this guy carefully. Jeez, my 3D printed case has got some tight tolerances on it. Holy smokes. 
Okay, well, you know what? You just follow his instructions to the letter because I don't want to pull this apart to show you. But yeah, you generally need to pull this open and pull the top half off and then adjust this physically to where you want it and then kind of snug it down a little bit and then get it into place. And when you push it into the phone, it will seat itself even closer right up against the, the lip of your case and then you lock it down uh, with the Allen keys. Now, this is still 3D printed plastic, so you're, you're gonna need to be a bit gingerly with this, but yeah, you generally want to make sure you do that. Otherwise, this could damage the device. So the Tiny MIDI is available over at N6ARA's website for about $65. The, the setup for this is dead simple. I did 3D print my own case. It comes in black, but uh, the project files are there. You can get them from Aura. That worked flawlessly. It prints all without supports. Really, really nice. So if you are so inclined, take a look at the link in the video description and check this out. I'm a big fan, and thank you, N6ARA, for solving a problem that I was trying to figure out how to deal with in the most effective way possible using Morse code on the go with real touch-like feels, like I'm literally using a key. Good job.